Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Herminder Singh. And I'm Raymond Young. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Mainland markets plunge, causing circuit breakers to kick in for the second time this week, suspending trade. War of words between lawmakers after copyright amendment bill reading adjourned again due to lack of quorum. And U.S. and Japanese leaders pledged to lead efforts to rein in North Korea after nuclear test. Mainland market, stock markets were shut down for the second time in four days, with trade being suspended less than half an hour after opening. The mainland benchmark index has already plunged by 12 percent this week, and questions are now being raised over the effectiveness of the circuit breaker mechanism. When all is not well, pull the plug. That's what mainland financial regulators resorted to, as yet another nosedive this morning forced the suspension of trading for the second time this week. Trading was halted 12 minutes after markets opened at 9.30 a.m., as the CSI 300 index, a gauge of blue chips listed in Shanghai and Shenzhen, plunged by 5%. That triggered the first circuit breaker, pausing trading for 15 minutes. But the freeze did nothing to calm investors, as the index dipped another 2% right after trading resumed at 9.57 a.m. That prompted the second circuit breaker to kick in just one minute later, this time abandoning trade for the day, marking the shortest trading session in the market's 25-year history. On Monday, the markets were closed at 1.33 p.m. The Shanghai Composite ended 7.3 percent lower, while the Shenzhen component lost 8.3 percent. The CSI 300 has plummeted 12 percent in just four days of trading this year, erasing a 9.4 percent rise in 2015. The panic sell-off was triggered by a further weakening of the yuan, with the midpoint rate 0.51 percent lower than yesterday, the biggest drop since a 2 percent devaluation in August. The surprise move by the People's Bank of China intensified fears that the world's second largest economy could not put the brakes on the looming slowdown. Critics argue that the circuit breaker, designed to restrict market volatility, doesn't help ease investors' fears, as they may rush to exit their positions as soon as trading resumes. With no trading curves, the Hong Kong market suffered a spillover of the turbulence across the border. The benchmark Hang Seng Index shed 647 points, or 3 percent, to finish at 20,333, the lowest close since July 2013. Investors in the region were also rattled by the uncertainty, with Tokyo's Nikkei falling by 2.3 percent, while Australian shares dropped by 2.2 percent. The second reading of the Copyright Amendment Bill was adjourned once again, this time for two weeks due to a lack of quorum. Pro-Beijing lawmakers condemned their Democratic counterparts for wasting time with the endless filibuster. Vicky Wan reports. After around six hours of debate, mixed in with 16 quorum calls, the second reading of the copyright amendment bill in Lechko was dramatically adjourned today due to a lack of quorum. Just before 3 p.m., New Democrats legislator Gary Fan made the session's 16th quorum call. 30 seconds before the end of the quorum bell, Fan left his seat, causing the head count to be too short of the required 35. A war of words between pro-government lawmakers and pan-democrats broke out outside the chamber following the aborted meeting. We would like to condemn the pan-democrats who bring this current situation. We all know that uh, with their uh, uh, filibustering tactic, make use of the quorum bell, quorum requirement, now the meeting agenda, and we cannot have a further meeting for this week. That means another week. Uh, is uh, waste, and we, uh, uh, I think, we don't have much uh, logical time to uh, to deliberate what we want to deliberate. Unionist Wong Kok Heng even urged the council to consider changing its proceedings to make lawmakers stay around the clock for discussions. But some pan Democrats refuted the accusation saying that some pro-establishment lawmakers were also to blame because some were not at their seats. Uh, filibustering uh, is a long tradition uh, in political history. Uh, for Hong Kong government and also for the pro-government councillor, uh, you know, uh, being not able to deal with such uh, strategy 
you know, that express their, in, you know, that just indicate their incompetency and also inability, you know, to meet with political crisis. So that it is maybe about time for us to urge for a change of government or change of the, the pro-establishment uh, councillor. People Power lawmaker Raymond Chen vowed to continue filibustering the bill, which he says may limit creativity and lead to political persecution by authorities, as long as the government doesn't consider the amendments proposed by pan Democrats. A dejected looking Commerce Chief Greg So urged pan Democrats to stop the delays and do their jobs. I actually, uh, almost all these calls for quorum are deliberately attempts to. Uh, prematurely terminate the, uh, the session in LegCo. And this is not in the best interest of Hong Kong. And I call upon um, the pan-democratic um, LegCo members to return to this chamber. This is their job. And I express my regret that they failed to do so. When asked if the government will reject the bill, so didn't give the usual firm rejection, and instead said it depends on future council proceedings. Earlier today, the second reading slowly progressed after the motion to adjourn the meeting, moved by the Labour Party seat hall last month, was rejected. Ho later proposed to refer the bill to a select committee to make way for other debates, such as the policy address, so all controversial issues could be discussed at the same time. But LegCo President Zhang yuk Singh said it would be up to council members to decide on whether to accept Ho's proposal. Zhang also said he will arrange meetings with both camps, but warned that nothing will be resolved if both parties refuse to cooperate. The adjournment of meeting sparked outrage from the Hong Kong Corporate Alliance. It says the survival of the creative and entertainment industries are at stake unless the legislation is updated. The council is scheduled for the policy address next Wednesday, meaning the debate will be postponed until the 20th of January. Vicky Wen, ATV News. An Equal Opportunities Commission study has found that one in every three workers have faced age discrimination in their workplace in the past five years. The government is being urged to look into the problem and to start public discussions right away as the majority of those surveyed want legislation against age discrimination. Karen Young reports. Ageism is causing emotional distress to some senior employees and is affecting the economy in terms of lost productivity and skills, according to the Equal Opportunities Commission. Between February and July last year, the Commission surveyed about 400 employees. 35% of respondents said they have experienced age discrimination at work in the past five years, and that is a serious situation in Hong Kong. They reported different forms of discrimination, including receiving lower salaries, being denied promotions or being targeted for redundancy. 78% agree that those aged 60 or above face prejudice, with one-third saying the problem is also being experienced by young workers aged 15 to 19. An overwhelming majority of 70% want legislation against age discrimination. However, some employers who gave the commission an in-depth review were reluctant to get on board. One of their concerns is that this could reduce flexibility in their business decisions, but the commission said this won't be compromised. In fact, our current law, including the SDO, the sex discrimination ordinance, the, the LDO or the DDO, we, we all have this kind of exemption if there is a genuine requirement for a certain attribute, including age. This can be exempt under the law. But she added that it's too early to say if there will be such a law in Hong Kong anytime soon and urged the government to carry out regular large-scale surveys to gauge the situation. The EOC wants practical guidelines on workplace age discrimination publicized on a wider basis. She urged re-employment of retirees as they can help ease the labor shortage of the city's aging population. Karen Yang, ATV News. Overseas. A self styled militia in the U.S. locked in an armed standoff with the government over land rights has been told by Native Americans to end their occupation of a wildlife refuge headquarters. And the U.S. and Japan have pledged to lead the international community's response to yesterday's apparent hydrogen bomb test by North Korea. Arthur Okiola reports. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and U.S. President Barack Obama have spoken by phone about how to respond to yesterday's nuclear test carried out by North Korea. 
Speaking in Parliament, Abe said both sides agreed that through a measure by the United Nations Security Council, the two nations will lead the international community. The U.S. and South Korean defense chiefs also discussed the testing of the alleged hydrogen bomb. South Korean Defense Minister Han Min Koo said his U.S. counterpart Ash Carter had reaffirmed his ironclad commitment to the South, and both sides agreed the North's actions were an unacceptable and irresponsible provocation. While there is skepticism about whether Pyongyang has the capabilities to develop a hydrogen bomb, the U.S. State Department is treating the detonation as a nuclear test. Our, the U.S. government position is that it was a nuclear test um, we're still working our way through the, the metrics here, um, so I'm really not at liberty to offer more definitive analysis okay, than that. Nothing we've seen so far backs up the claim right. uh, that this was a hydrogen. You... North Korea has said it will continue to strengthen its nuclear capabilities in order to defend itself against what it calls Washington's hostile policies. Um, the, um... In the U.S., Native Americans in Burns, Oregon, have slammed a self-styled militia engaged in an armed standoff with the government over ranchers' land rights. Ammon Bundy and his supporters arrived in Oregon after ranchers Dwight Hammond Jr. and his son Stephen were jailed for setting fires that spread to federal land. Bundy is the son of a Nevada rancher who was involved in another armed standoff with federal authorities in April last year. The protesters say the government wants to seize private ranch land for its own use and insist they're helping the Burns Paiute tribe, who hit back saying the militia's ignorance of the area's real history was offensive. They have already in their mind decided what they want to do. And any rational or reasonable conversation, negotiation, whatever, I don't think is going to sink in with them. We as Harney County residents don't need some clown to come in here and stand up for us. This community is hardworking. Everybody, we make something out of nothing here. We don't got no jobs here. But we don't need them to back us up. Law enforcement called on the occupiers to leave, saying they had hijacked what was originally a peaceful rally. The second powerful storm in three days triggered by El Nino hit Southern California, bringing torrential downpours and flooding. Severe wildfires last summer left hillsides barren, raising fears of flooding and landslides in the Los Angeles suburbs. I'm concerned because my, my uh, garage is overflowing right now with wind. I, I can't get rid of the rain as fast as it's coming in. It just flooded my backyard. In San Diego, the storm submerged several cars at a flooded intersection. Forecasters say the El Nino season is expected to last into spring. Arthur Ricciola, ATV News. The latest innovation in robots, gaming and virtual reality are all on show this year at the Consumer Electronics Fair in the U.S. The focus this year will be several companies which hope to rise above the competition with drone technology. More from Arthur Arcola. There's no telling what you'll see at the Consumer Electronics Show, which opened in Las Vegas with 20,000 new products on display. Chip giant Intel unveiled its 9-bot droid developed with Chinese developer Xiaomi. Aside from looking like something straight out of science fiction, it boasts voice recognition and a 3D camera. This is capable of moving around and identifying stuff. It can respond to voice command and it can stream stuff to your phone. Also on show is technology from startup Urania, which uses a 3D infrared camera to allow gamers to see themselves in the video games they play. They have fun and want to play with others you want to play with their friends, you want to share it, it's more fun for everybody. This year also looks to be the battle for drone supremacy, with more than 100 models building on the tech, which is rising in both popularity and capabilities. You had better sensors, you had a better camera, you had um, better performance by the drone. I mean, this is incredible. It's, it's like with computers. Every generation just gets better and better and better. Another technology that's seen a major advancement is virtual reality. Industry leader Oculus is creating a major buzz with the Rift, a virtual reality system that's further blurring the lines between what's real and what's not. And virtual reality will continue to move. We're going to need to get your sensory inputs, your hands, where you are in space. We're going to have to get your inner ears. So there's a long pathway of VR ahead of us, and the Rift is really the beginning of we got your eyes now. The annual event, which is in its 49th year, 
is expected to attract more than 180,000 visitors, despite big names like Apple, Google and Microsoft being conspicuously absent from the show. Arthur Rekiller, ATV News.